Welcome. Uh, grab your snacks, grab your beverage of choice, and uh, thanks for joining me. Another amazing story. How did I get a Cadillac Escalade? Free. Well, I'm about to tell you why. So, you may have seen this pop up a couple videos. It was you know, you'd see it sitting over there in the background or something like that, and you wonder, what's going on with this thing? Well, just like the Roadmaster, I was, uh, you know, waiting for the right time. And, um, but here we are. We're almost out of, almost out of winter, I think. But, um, so it all started... If you go back to um, the famous blue truck, you know what happened with that. I had to get rid of it, and uh, it was a sad day. And as you know, that was what my wife drove, and she loved the truck. We all loved it. Um, so we had to get rid of that. You know, I often said that even when she drove the truck that you know she really didn't need a pickup and she really agreed sometimes it was nice but you know she liked that style that engine whatever you want to say and um, I often said that you know she should be driving like a Tahoe or something you know a 2000s Tahoe 5.3 you can't go wrong you know you still got the four wheel drive it's still heavy you can put the groceries in the back, you can put the, you know, the kids in there, whatever you want to do. So, that being said, we got rid of the truck, the blue one, and as you know, I came upon the black truck, the 2010, which was amazing in itself. Go back, uh, check out that video, but um, I said, well, here you go. Unexpected, but how about... A 2010 truck you know would you drive that and um, she said well at first you know she drove it around and stuff like that and it was nice and everything but um, you know she she said to me that it didn't really feel like her vehicle you know that it was really hers I mean it's got a lift gate and coming up to winter, it's going to be, you know, um, my sort of winter, you know, truck that I can park my square bodies and uh, it can tow my trailer and haul stuff with the lift gate when I need to. But she said, so it's not really like it's mine, even though, you know, obviously we're married, so everything's, everything's ours anyway. But, you know, it's still nice to say, you know my truck whatever I get it um, so unfortunately lack of words you know it's it wasn't good enough and uh, you know I understand you know I understood it then I understand now so um, I said well you know it's okay I said you can think of it as your truck you know put your stuff in there put your uh, you know, whatever you want to do and use it as your truck. But when I need to go pick something up with the lift gate, you know, I'm going to use it. But, no, not really good. But, you know, she did drive it when she needed to when it served its purpose uh, in that time, you know. Um, so then, not long after that, um, we were actually... We were out, I believe it was a, it was either a Friday or a Saturday night, and uh, we decided to go out for dinner, and um, we were in the 2010, the black truck, yep, still on, uh, 
So we're in the truck and we decide to go to dinner. So just before we get to the restaurant, I get a message through, uh, you know, messenger on my phone and um, through Facebook, whatever. And some lady says, you know, um, this is who I am. And I knew who she was. She was, you know, her, um, her husband. Um, I knew him. Um, he actually works at the parts store in town. So uh, I knew who it was. And she said, listen, um, a friend of mine has a junk vehicle they need to get rid of. And from what my husband says, you're the, you're the guy to contact about that. And um, so she says, can you please call this number and talk to, um, it, it was her friend, a lady that was her friend, but that lady's husband was the one that was actually looking to get rid of the vehicle. So she said, can you call this number and ask for, you know, this guy and, and talk to him about it um, as soon as possible. They want to get rid of it, you know, they want it done and over with. So I said, oh yeah, no problem. She didn't know what it was or anything like that. So I said, well, you know, better to uh, strike while the iron's hot, you know. So um, I took out the phone and called this guy up, you know, right there, right in the parking lot of the restaurant. Oh. So... I call him up and the guy's very nice, very friendly, and he starts talking to me and I, you know, he says, um, he says, I got a Cadillac Escalade that I need to junk. And I'm saying, wow, you know, to myself, I've never scrapped a Cadillac Escalade before, but this sounds pretty cool. So um, He starts talking to me about it, describing it, and um, he says that um, he, he's sort of he's sort of like selling me the vehicle over the phone, like the way he's talking. He's talking all about the good things about it, like I'm like buying this thing. So I'm thinking this guy's going to want a lot of money or something, and you know I'm going to have to break it to him that I only pay this much for junk vehicles. And he's not going to like it, so whatever. The guy keeps talking, and he says that his reasoning for wanting to get rid of it is, he said, the damn thing, the transfer case drips in my driveway. He's like, and it's been doing this for a while. He said, I took it to, we have one dealership in town left, and it's a GM dealership, and um, mixed reviews on that place, but uh, he took it there five times five and apparently they couldn't fix the leak so every time he would get it back he would pay all this money and he would uh, drive it for a little while a couple weeks and um, there it is dripping fluid in his driveway and um, where this guy lived now that I see was a, a very kind of you know nice part of town a lot of nice houses real expensive real nice and neat and clean driveways and yards and stuff like that so you know one of those guys he doesn't want don't want anything you know dripping on your driveway and especially not from your nice 2000 you know two Cadillac Escalade so um, he's very proud of the vehicle uh, he went out, he waxed it all the time. Anyway, um, he says, the last time I brought it to the dealership, they told me that they were going to have to replace the transfer case now. And um, so he says, how much is that? And they said they were actually going to put a used one in there, and it was still going to be like upwards of $2,000 for the parts and to put it in. So he said, no, I'm not buying that. No, I'm not, I, I you know, he, he just didn't buy the whole thing. Like, you know, this is, 
and needs the whole transfer keys. Um, so anyway, he tells me about it. He says, uh, I can't really get the gist of what he's wanting to do. Does he want to sell it? Does he want to junk it? What, what, what is it, you know? So finally I said, you know, I said straight up, I said, it seems like you're, I said, you, I said, are you trying to sell me this vehicle or are you wanting to junk it? And he said, well, he said, uh, you know, I found a place down in uh, southern Maine that I could drive it down and get, you know, uh, a couple hundred bucks for it uh, over the scale, but um, I don't even want to drive it. I don't want to drive it because I'm afraid all the fluid's going to leak out of the transfer case and, you know, I'll be left on the highway off to get it towed anyway. He said, but he said, if someone like yourself wants to come get it out of my driveway, he said, uh, I don't want a dime for it. He said, I just want it gone. He said, if you want to rip it apart and use it for parts, if you think you can fix it, whatever you want to do, I'm willing to just sign over the title and call it a day. He said, I got another car, a BMW. My wife's got a car. This is sitting in the side yard on the grass because he doesn't want the fluid on the driveway. So he said, um, he said, I'd like it done quick. And I said, well, okay. I said, I'm the man for your job. I mean, uh, free car, I don't care what it is. I'm going to take it, but an Escalade. So I'm getting excited. I'm thinking the thing's probably kind of a rat, you know, and I know that some of them came with the six liter LS and uh, I'd really like to have one of those tucked in the corner. For a rainy day so uh, I said yeah I said I can do that for you he said when can he come I said I'll be there in the morning he said great he said 10 a.m. I said I'll be there so I took the old dually and uh, went there and picked it up so when I get over there the guy's very friendly um, I walk over and the thing's actually running. You can't even hear it sitting there idling. It was a hot day and uh, I get in it, it's ice cold inside. AC's on, it's running. He said, yeah, I, I took the battery out and recharged it last night for you so that it would be nice and fresh and fired right up. So I mean, obviously I could have just jumped in this thing and just, you know, drove it home. But, you know, you got to make it look good. Um, junk car removal. Like, so he said, uh, he said so what do, you, what do you think? You want it? And I said, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, sounds good to me. So hopped in the thing. I drove it right on my trailer. Threw a couple of chains on it to look good. And uh, he said, okay, he said, um, he said, come on inside, we'll, uh, we'll get the paperwork for it and the title and stuff. Him and his wife, like I said, very friendly. They brought me inside their house. They sat, we sat down at the table. They offered me something to drink. Um, they, um, very, very nice house. Um, and, you know, they wanted a copy of the, you know, title and bill of sale for their records or whatever to put away you know so very legit you know people do everything by the book and um, they even left they even left the title blank and just signed it so that if I wanted to resell it or whatever I could that's how good these people were and uh, he had he showed me down in his man cave in the basement he had a nice little bar set up and all his stuff and up on the wall he put the plates that were on this and they said bad cad and that's what he always had on this thing all the years that he owned it and he explained to me um, a little bit about what happened with the leak and at the dealership and um, he explained that he still religiously even after it was just sitting in the yard, he went out and put a coat of wax on it 
buffed her up. Uh, just had the brand new tires put on, um, you know, like a month before it was parked. He said, uh, they're brand new. He even got, he bought another wheel off of eBay, spent all the money, bought, bought another wheel so that he could have the same as a spare and uh, another tire the same exact size and everything because, you know, it's all wheel drive. So he wanted to do that, had the cover in the back for the spare, everything, all leather, Bose system, just like it came from the factory. Um, service records of everything he had done to it, uh, religious maintenance, you know, um, suspension brakes, um, oil changes, fluid, you know, changes, stuff like that. Everything was always done to it, right on time. So, um, he starts telling me a little bit about what happened as far as the dealership goes, and it started leaking, and he brought it in a couple of times, and it was, you know, at the back of the transfer case, there's a seal, and um, where the rear drive shaft goes in, sticks in there, there's a seal there, keeps the fluid from going out. So they replaced the seal. They put it back together. A month later, it starts leaking again. He brings it back. So they replace the seal again. Does the same thing. So then he brings it back again, and there's. Um, the end of that, there's a yoke that goes in. You know, you got your U joint, you got the yoke, it slides in, and uh, they replace that. And that was expensive. They put a new one of those in there, another new seal. Month later, ripping up and down the interstate, parks it in his driveway, looks underneath, still leaking, still dripping. What is going on here? So the final thing was, is he brought it in and now they're sick of it. They're sick of hearing him. You know, they're sick of seeing the vehicle. I get it. I've worked at shops. I know how it is. And uh, they say, listen, we're just gonna have to replace the old transfer keys. Figure, and that's gotta fix it, right? I mean, uh, you know, that's about your last resort is what they were thinking. Like, this thing still leaks, well, take that one out and throw it away and put another one in, and then it's going to fix it. Well, like I said, he didn't like the price, and he said, nope, fat enough, uh, I'm going to park it, and that's it. So, he did his own research on it for a little while, and finally they came to the conclusion and called me. So... I leave there. I can't believe what just happened. I got this thing on the trailer. It's rotted. I just left it running with the AC on. Why not? Uh, five minutes down the road from where I live here. So, of course, my wife didn't want to go because she didn't want to jinx the whole deal because we were we went out to eat and uh, we. Well, actually, I left that part out. Sorry. We we celebrated. I mean, we celebrated before the celebration should have took place. We had appetizers. We had drinks. And, I mean, we, we lived it up at that restaurant. And uh, it was a hefty bill to, uh, to prove it. So um, when we left there, of course, the guy gave me the address. I knew exactly where it was. Like I said, not far from where we live. So I said, let's take a ride and just see if this thing's sitting there in the driveway. So sure enough, we took a ride that night and uh, there was a Cadillac Escalade sitting there. And I said, holy shit. I mean, obviously couldn't see much in the dark, but I mean, uh, you see the front of this thing. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's mine in the morning, you know, so very exciting. Um, so 
shenanigans take place. We go to bed. We wake up. She doesn't want to go for the ride, doesn't want to jinx the deal, so I go at it alone. So anyway, there I am. I back in the driveway with this thing running on the trailer, and she comes out. Can't believe it, right? We can't believe it. So take it off the trailer. What's the first thing we do? Hop the hell in it. Toss some plates on it. We went cruising. I believe it had almost, I think it had like three quarters of a tank of fuel in it. Of course, I gave it the, you know, quick little um, test, you know. I shut it off, make sure the battery was good. I tested the battery so it didn't leave us stranded. That was good. I checked all the fluids. Um, I took a, a look underneath, made sure nothing was broken, nothing's le you know, nothing crazy's going on. Um, I even topped off the tires that had been sitting there. I filled them up. So let's go. So throw the dogs in. Let's go cruising around. We got iced coffees. We lived it up. We were laughing. So we go for our ride. We come back home, back in the driveway. I said, well, I said, I couldn't get you a Tahoe. I couldn't get you another Chevy truck, but how about a Cadillac Escalade with a 6 liter, 345 horsepower, all wheel drive with a hundred and, it's like 150 something thousand miles on it. How about that? Would you drive that? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, of course, at that point, I look underneath of it after we got it hot and drove it around and yeah. That damn transfer case was dripping, but you know what? Didn't bother me a damn bit. It's a free Cadillac Escalade. I don't care whether the thing leaks. I'll put a pan under it and drive it every damn day and top off the fluid, you know? So, so then, uh, not long after that, actually, before... We even um, were going to think about, you know, registering and getting insurance on it. I said, I got to see, I, I got to see underneath this thing, you know, I got to inspect this vehicle and make sure, you know, just make sure of everything. So, um, a friend of mine's got a shop in town, he's got a lift, very, very busy all the time, but sometimes you can sneak in there. So I, uh, I drove this thing by and he loves, you know, he likes GM trucks and everything like that, LS motors. He couldn't believe it. I mean, he's still a little upset that I got this thing for nothing. But um, he said, oh, yeah, pull it right in. Let's put it up. So I pull it in. We put it on the lift. No, no major issues under there. Everything's very tight, clean, um, normal, you know, little surface rust here and there. Um, no rot other than just a little bit starting on the back of those rocker panels. Um, but, I mean, clean just everywhere else. So, he grabs a hold of that uh, dry shaft and clunk, clunk, clunk where it goes in where the leak was and he said oh yeah that's a common thing on these and he said uh, there's a seal in there he said well what they did was you know they kept replacing the seal but there's actually a bearing in there a bushing I should say it's not really a bearing it's more of a bushing like a race if you would that um, you know, that rides around when you slide that yoke in there. So what had happened is that bushing was worn out. Now, replacing the seal would get them a little bit, although um, you would still get a vibration at a high speed. So replace the seal, it would last for a little while, and then they replaced that yoke. But what was going on was the yoke had so much play in there that it wore that out too and therefore would leak so 
they kept throwing parts at it, but they never, they didn't do the one simple, simple part replacement was that bushing. So I said, all right. He said, yeah, just uh, let me know. We'll do it. We'll do it on the lift. Be nice and easy. He said, no problem. He said, uh, the only thing is, you know, you do have to pull the transfer case out, which, you know, it's about six bolts, dry shafts, uh, one mount, not too bad. A couple wires, you know, no big deal. So I, he said, but he got the thing for nothing. He's like, you know, so I went online that night, went on the computer and uh, I started looking around and yeah, it was, uh, it is a common problem with these. And uh, so they sold that back half of that transfer case, it's like a big uh, cover, and they sell that on Amazon with the new bushing, the new seal. Already, you just take off that cover and put this cover on, and it fixes the problem. So it was like $120. I said, oh order that so got that on the way it did take some special fluid because of um, you know being all-wheel drive uh, so I ordered that and uh, from there on we drove it um, we actually drove it on the interstate to go to the insurance company to get insurance on it because I'm going to start driving it. I mean, the little drippage ain't no big deal. It holds a lot of fluid, so not too worried about it. Um, so after driving it at, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour, I definitely felt that um, what was, you know, that wobble and that dry shaft was given a slight vibration. Not too good. And um, after getting off, and looking at the back window, you could see the speckles of the fluid because at the high speed that was going like this and that fluid was coming out and misting at the back and then covering the back window. So, um, so we just, uh, we stuck to driving it around town, stuff like that. Didn't really take it on any long trips or, you know, uh, interstate, you know, type uh, trips anyway, but um, unfortunately, he got busy and the shop, uh, you know, he kept putting me off, um, but I understand how things are. It just took a long time before I had all the parts in the back of the thing all ready to go, but um, it was a long time before we could get it in, but finally I said, listen, I said, you know, it's it's getting to, you know, um, time where, you know, she wants to drive this thing. I mean, you know, we want to go and, and take some, you know, take some day trips and, you know, we want to we want to drive this thing and not have it, you know, have the problem that it does. I mean, I have all the parts. So um, I ended up what did it was he needed a favor from me and I hauled the truck for him and uh, it was a real pain in the ass and he said how much I said listen I said I gotta get that escalate on the lift and get it fixed I said I'm never gonna hear you know this is becoming a, an issue so he said okay I understand yeah um, so it was like two days from then or whatever he said uh, we set up a time and everything come over and do it now we got it up there bing bam boom transfer case out on the bench um, and uh, one little problem came about and I'll show you right here because I kept it for a little show and tell but on these Cadillacs on the all-wheel drive um, you got this extra weight here and uh, they need that for some reason so this is the yoke that was in it now, I don't know if you can see on camera, but right about here is where that it was riding in there on that 
bushing that was gone and it was causing it to ride like this right to wobble and ride a little crooked and what it actually did was it machined a groove I mean you can it's you know it almost stops your finger right there and it wore this big groove in there so needless to say this couldn't go back in there because it'd be the same issue you know and uh, I'll stop right here and I'll show you underneath um, the other part that I'm talking about and everything so here we are underneath of the Escalade and you can see hopefully you can see that back half of that case how you know the condition of that versus the other half and you can see that that's what um, I bought and we replaced and uh, you can see there's that expensive uh, yoke that I had to buy that's already rusty because it's just you know raw steel but um, that's the piece and uh, there it is it's all together and right inside there right at the end there's a there's a seal and a, a little bushing that everything rides against and that's what was worn out and you can still see signs of uh, the fluid that was spraying everywhere which probably helped um, you know coat the underneath of this thing being up in Maine it's, uh, you can see this thing's got kind of a wacky exhaust setup being the six liter yeah. um, it's sort of like a true duel where each cat each pipe comes off the cats like that there's no really like Y pipe and then uh, it comes up to here and it's still dual before it comes into the massive muffler and then of course you know just goes back to your uh, single tailpipe but you know normal surface rust like I said uh, I mean, this thing's a 2002, and it's lived in Maine its uh, entire life. So, uh, but no major problems. Just, uh, you know, a little bit on the back of the rocker there, which, uh, you know, this whole, this whole running board will just have to come off and, then you can um, fix that easily. So, we got it all back together. As you know, we got that cover all on there and um, all put back together. It's a little bit of a job. We had to switch around some parts inside and everything before we put it back, but uh, it's a little bit tricky. Um, we got that all together and then we actually, I said, he said, well, you're gonna have to buy one of these. Well, got on the horn, him, he did and I did right then, that day. And uh, he actually called the dealership that this thing was at. You know, obviously he didn't tell them about, that it was at, but they said that that piece right there was discontinued and they couldn't even get it. So I got kind of scared at that point. And uh, it's not just like one out of a truck like I showed you. It's got that weight on it. So um, I ended up finding a couple around just on my phone real quick that were on eBay and stuff like that so I said well I said in any case I said 
I got in the thing and I actually, you know, it still has the front, the front still turned. So I was able to just carefully start it and I backed it out of his shop and I parked it to the side, locked it up. And uh, I said, well, I ain't going to have this piece tomorrow. So um, he said, all right, order your part. And then you get that. All we got to do is swap that to the U-joint on the other dry shaft. Throw the dry shaft in and that'll be it. Be fixed. So I went home. I actually found a guy on eBay that was that had these like new old stock kind of stuff, like GM stuff. And he had a few of these things that were discontinued. And uh, it, I had to pay, I think it was like $130, $140 for that thing. But, again, free Escalade, let's make it happen. So, I ordered that piece up and I waited for it to come in. And uh, took a few days. Got it, went down there, slapped it on there, slapped the U-joint together, pulled it back in, threw the shaft in, and um, took it for a ride. And it was real scary because it didn't want to shift, it didn't want to do nothing that it was supposed to do. It was doing all kinds of weirdo shit, lights flashing. So I went back, I pulled in there, and... Uh, he plugged the scanner into it. Turns out it was just this tiny little sensor on the side of uh, the transfer case. And we took the one out of the old case and put it in, you know, this cover and put that in there. And now it doesn't work because we disturbed it. It's like some sort of a magnetic little, um, you know, reader that pokes in there and senses whatever, speed sensor or something like that. So what was going on was it wasn't, it didn't know what to do. It was all haywire, so it wouldn't shift, it wouldn't do nothing. So lucky enough, I went down to the parts store in town that day and they had one. So it wasn't, I mean, it was like 10 bucks or something like that. So came back, we threw it in, and that was it. They fixed it all. Um, I drove it home, and all set. And that's where we are today. Um, you know, I never, I drove a couple of these things throughout the years, but it's, uh, you know, you laugh and you say it's just a, just a Cadillac, you know, badges on a Tahoe or something like that. But it really is not. This thing, it rides. The, the ride is unbelievable. You can't explain it, it unless you rode in it yourself. Um, the thing just, I mean, it's awesome. I, you know, I like just romping on it in the snow and just the all-wheel drive. And you hear that six-liter and... Uh, it's a stock exhaust on it, still has the cats on there, not for long, but, um, you know, it has a nice little tone to it, and um, these have the 4L60, but it's a, a heavy-duty upgraded version um, that they um, recalibrate and do all kinds of stuff to, to handle the 345 horse that these have. Um, The, these also came with the 5.3, and that was, um, I believe, um, 285 horsepower. So a huge jump up to having that 6 liter. Uh, it's, got, it's got some sort of an air uh, suspension that's automatic. It, you know, it, it levels and does things. You can hear little compressors running and pretty scary, you know, the lines under there and the air, the air suspension, stuff like that. But... Um, I mean, that's it. I didn't have to do anything else to it. I changed the oil. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, I'm just trying to think. It, there's really nothing else it needs other than, you know, maybe some, some uh, full-length headers and, you know, 
nice exhaust out the back, some duels or something would be nice, but um, my wife's only complaint <laughs> after getting a, a Cadillac Escalade for free and driving this around, the only complaint is it doesn't have remote start. That blue truck, she got spoiled because when I bought it, the lady that bought it brand new had a remote start put in it. You just hit the button and uh, it, you know you get used to that stuff. So she's like, you know, why why would they even make an Escalade without remote start? That's just preposterous, you know. And uh, I agree, it, it definitely needs it, you know. Um, I did. Um, I am gonna order all the uh, LED um, bulbs and everything for it because uh, you know I did. I did buff out the headlights. Um, still a little bit yellowy, but uh, I buffed them out a few times, so got those a little better. And I did put the. It bothered me the daytime running lights that always come on just when you're driving. Uh, in the middle there, they were like that old yellowy kind of look to them. Uh, so I put a couple LEDs in there real quick because it drove me nuts. But um, that's it. That's the story um, of how I got 2002 Cadillac Escalade for free. Um, yeah. It was free. Uh, I spent, you know, a couple dollars, a couple parts. Um, you know, but there you go. And uh, unexpected, again, a very unexpected thing. Um, again, you know, not long after this, uh, it was just one thing after the other. The Roadmaster happened, and you all heard that story. If you didn't, check that video out because uh, that's an amazing story on how we got that and the history, you know, behind it. But um, basically, um, you know, she was like, you know, I, I can't believe it, you know, I'm. I'm driving an Escalade, and then I get my my old, uh, you know, Roadmaster wagon, the same one pretty much, back. I could drive that when I want to, and uh, it's just, um, it's pretty amazing how it came about, but um, I often wonder if, uh, you know, if I was ever to run into that guy, um, I think that he would not be mad or you know, jealous that here we are driving this thing around and he gave it away, but I think he would, I think he would really like it, and uh, I did drive by the house a few times, see if he was out there, you know, but um, haven't came across him yet, so. Cheers. Cheers to free Cadillac Escalades. Ah. Well, there you go. Another amazing story. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, I have absolutely no reason to make anything up at this point in my life I'm I'm just living I'm happy to uh, still be living and um, happy every day I wake up and um, I got no reason to make shit up you know that this is this is real life I'm giving it to you this is the truth um, you know, people all have stories. They spice them up a little bit. Um, I have no reason to do that. I, I, I have enjoyment out of being able to tell you 
uh, the the exact truth. Uh, sometimes, you know, you got to kind of um, leave numbers out because that creates some problems on certain things, which uh, sometimes I leave out, you know, the information on that. But um, I'm telling you, uh, it happened. I got a call on junk car removal. They needed my service. They had a Cadillac Escalade. Come get it. Take it away. They were happy to see it go. They they stood in the driveway and they took pictures and they they waved and smiled and waved and seen me pull away with this thing. That's all there is to it. And uh, we're obviously very thankful. You know, everything that happened um, with the blue truck and all that. And then, you know, the only thing is, you know, in the LS world where everyone wants to do an LS swap, you know, that this is what you want. <laughs> you want. You want to get one of these. And... 150,000 miles? I mean, that's just broken in for one of these. And uh, if, you, if you want to do an LS swap or, uh, you know, build one up, do whatever, turbos, all that shit, this is what you would want. You would want one of these because it's, it's the one. And it kills me because I got one, but here it is in the wife's ride. And... Uh, I tell her that all the time. I said, you know, I said, if I was ever, you know, I always kind of was like dreaming about putting an LS in the Suburban or, you know, something like that. But I don't know. I've kind of gotten off of that. I've had a couple of 5.3s hanging around. I ended up selling them. Um, but she said, well, she said, I really like the thing, but, you know, it's day will come. And, uh, Hopefully that day, when that day comes, I'm still able and uh, it's still in one piece to where I can extract it and uh, maybe do something with it. But, you know, I actually love driving this thing, um, especially now in the winter. Uh, you know, we finally got to that point where we have two newer you know, four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive vehicles that, you know, I don't have to take and I don't have to. I could park the square bodies, the two-wheel drives, and uh, the dually I still use because it's got the dump bed and, you know, um, I do stuff with that, you know, trash pickup, scrap, all that kind of stuff. Still need that, and uh, I'm glad because I do like to rumble around, make a little noise in that every now and then, but... Um, you know, it sucks you got the salt on it, but what are you going to do? Uh, this is where we live, and, and you got to deal with it. But, you know, when I got to go somewhere, I, you know, sure, you need something at the store. If it's snowing or whatever, I yeah, go out, I tap the key in this thing, and I mean, it's just luxury to the max. I mean, heated seats, I've never experienced that. Heated seats, Bose system, I mean... It's just, uh, it's unbelievable, you know. You actually hit a button and it's programmed to, you know. A lot of people would laugh, but th this is actually a newer vehicle to me. And, it, and it's, it's like 20 years old. But to me, you know, an old, an old vehicle is like, you know, a 78 farm truck, 78 Suburban, you know, an 80 Dually, you know, that's old. That's an old vehicle. This just doesn't seem it, you know. Same thing with the black truck, 2010. That's an old truck now. You know, people call that an old truck, but, you know, I think of it as a very new, luxurious vehicle. And uh, this thing is just crazy. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's definitely can tow some shit um oh and it's gonna the uh 
the hitch, the you know the receiver. The he put a ball in there, slid it in, put a pin with a lock, and it's been in there for years, and it's it's pretty froze up. But uh, I gotta cut that lock off of there and get that out, and I'll get it out of there. That way, I could slide in the old two and five sixteenths and uh, see how this thing does with the car trailer. Oh, definitely. And, uh, you know, I hope it's around for a while. And, and like I said, it's just, uh, it's unbelievable. And there you go. I'm done uh, babbling on. Um, wood stove burned down. I didn't even add any wood. Uh, that's it. More beer to be had. Um, and uh, we'll end it there. And... You know, just uh, keep in mind, you know, you're laughing and lying and laughing and just, you know, having a great time. And, uh, you know, you think every, you know, you think it's a big joke, but, you know, the thing is, is, you know, you know, you know if I'm talking to you and you know if I'm not talking to you. But, you know when I'm really talking to you. And, you know, way back then, you made an error in judgment. And, um, you know, there could be a chance that the day comes and uh, things happen. But, till then, it's a nice day, so laugh away, and, uh, you know, you might want to take a look this way, take a look that way, before you cross the street, you know what I'm saying? Because you might see this and this on the streets.